Okay, free motion embroidery. Um, I have uh, a piece of fabric in my hoop. Uh, this is an embroidery uh, hoop for regular um, hand embroidery, but uh, I'm using it for my machine. And I've got the fabric in as tight as I can get it. The uh, machine uh, is a uh, vintage uh, treadle. Well, it wasn't originally a treadle machine, but I've taken the motor off and put it in my treadle base. Uh, it runs on the uh, uh, leather cord that goes around the wheel at the base uh, that's operated by my feet. Um, the uh, uh, thread I've got in here right now is uh, standard uh, quilting thread. It's um, uh, it's variegated, uh, 40 weight, uh, I believe it is, Coates and Clark um, cotton quilting thread. Um, I'm also going to do some uh, with uh, regular embroidery, uh, machine embroidery thread, but uh, I like the color of this uh, variegated quilting thread for my tree trunk. Uh, so. I'm gonna, um, let's see, what do I do? I've got, uh, there's a, a, a knob on this machine that I turn and it lowers the feed dogs. Uh, makes it easier when the feed dogs aren't engaged. If your machine doesn't have that, you can simply set the stitch length uh, regulator to the shortest, uh, closest to zero stitch length you can. That keeps the feed dogs from moving back and forth so much and prevents the drag on the fabric. Uh, it is best if you've got one that you can uh, drop the feed or uh, some have a cover that can go over uh, the feed dogs. That works as well. Um, I also have removed the foot. So there's no, there's no uh, foot used in this. Um, they do uh, sell, uh, <coughs> this is a, uh, free motion. Uh, I use it for quilting, uh, but it's also referred to often as a darning foot or an, uh, uh, an embroidery foot. Uh, you could use that as well. And what happens is that um, every time the needle goes up, this bar comes in contact with the needle bar and it lifts the foot. So there's, uh, the pressure comes off. It kind of hops up and down. Uh, but I find it easier without the foot at all. <coughs> so the, uh, the, uh, the whole hoop goes under. I want to make sure we've got the orientation of this correct so that I end up with the embroidery going the direction I want it to go. Um, so I want to make sure that I don't have things that are impeding my movement. Now, do you see, if I go this way, I'm hitting over here on this edge of the machine uh, top. So what I use is a one of those, uh, so, you know, it, it catches here, it catches on the hinges, uh, and I don't want to keep banging into things. So I put a one of those slider mats on top of the whole thing, and that, uh, evens it out and prevents that. So I'm going to go get one of those and I'm going to zoom the camera in uh, so that you can see close up uh, and uh, we'll start sewing. <clears throat> okay, that's the slider mat there uh, on the base of the machine and it's just a, uh, a, a slick surface uh, sort of thing that uh, has a little tackiness on the back and that keeps it from slipping around. But that covers up the bumps and things around uh, the edges of the machine so that'll make that that uh, hoop slide easier. Uh, I'm going to zoom right in to the sewing area so you can see what I'm doing and we'll get started. So the hoop goes in, 
the uh, uh, make sure that you lower that uh, even though there's no foot on here and it's easy to forget because there's no foot it's easier to easy to forget that you need to still lower that because what that lowering does is it applies the tension to the tension disc if you don't have this lowered, your thread is just sliding through here with no tension on it at all. So you got, even though there's no foot, you got to remember to lower your tension uh, uh, to lower that, that presser bar so that you get the, the right tension. And we'll draw up some thread and uh, get started. So here's the, the bobbin thread coming up from the bottom. You always want to start with both threads up uh, and uh, the, uh, the treadle goes pretty slowly if you want it to. I can go really fast as well, but so the, the, the speed of my feet is what's making the speed of that needle going up and down. If I want it to be faster, I just move my feet faster, but I find the, uh, the slower speed makes, uh, makes it easier for me to see what I'm doing and uh, to really uh, get a sense of where I'm going. I think we all have a tendency to want to do everything super fast, but and this is this is not a fast uh, project. This this takes this takes some time, <clears throat> but that's part of the fun. So, <clears throat> and I don't know if it's apparent what I'm doing here, but basically. I am just going back and forth using the thread to draw my picture. And I feel like my tension is a little loose, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it oh well, it could be because it wasn't in that thread guide, but I'm still gonna give it just a touch of a turn forward. thread is variegated, and so <clears throat> you're going to have areas where you got the light thread coming through and areas where the dark thread is coming through, and you, you, you really can't um, guarantee which uh, section of the thread is going to come up at any given spot. So what you need to do is, when you're using a variegated thread, is you need to be able to uh, sort of alter your plan as the various colors of the thread come up and move your work to where you're working to the area where that part of the thread is going to be appropriate. So, you know, when the, when the dark thread starts coming out, move to an area where you'd like to have some darker shading in it. When you've got the lighter thread coming out, then you work on an area where lighter thread is more appropriate. So it takes a little um, oh, a little thinking. It's not just like just totally uh, brainless. You, you have to sort of see where your design is going and figure out where you'd like some darker parts to be and where you'd like the lighter parts to be and you sort of work with the uh, the thread as it comes off of the off of the spool. Uh, another thing that uh, I should note: um, a lot of people have uh, a fear of sewing their fingers 
with the exposed needle without a foot there to keep your, your fingers out of the uh, out of the works. Um, I'm going really slow and I'm being careful and uh, uh, it's, uh, it would be pretty hard for me to get my finger in there because I'm not moving them that much. You know, I'm, I'm using my, I'm holding my fingers and moving, just moving that, uh, um, that hoop back and forth, just the smallest amount to, uh, to make it happen. And so I'm not really getting my fingers that close to it. Here. 
uh, this machine is a treadle. And so my speed regulation and my stitch regulation is happening based on how fast I move my foot on the treadle and how fast I move my hands to move the fabric. That's it. And I think it's, uh, for me, it's actually easier than using a machine with a motor on it. I, I feel like I'm in a lot more control than, uh, than I am with uh, trying to just barely touch the foot pedal uh, in the right amount to get it to go exactly right. Uh, some of the newer machines, a lot of the newer machines, have variable speeds on their motors, and that certainly makes it easier to regulate your speed, but I find that there's nothing that I can regulate the speed with as great as one of these old machines that's operated by my own foot power. I just feel like I get exactly the speed and control that I want. I certainly could have drawn this whole thing out in, in advance. Um, I'm more of a uh, make it up as I go kind of a person. You know, I have sort of the basic shape and idea in my head. I know what a tree looks like, so um, I just sort of go with it. I created this to sort of let it happen, but um, you know, if, if you think it would be easier, you, you could certainly draw out a, uh, a pattern, uh, a design right on the fabric. Use a use some sort of wash away uh, uh, marking pencil or pen and draw it on and then you have a guideline to, to, to go against. Certainly nothing wrong with that. going to show up that great or not, but uh, there it is. There's my trunk. Uh, and next I'll do the leaves. Um, okay, I've got the machine reset with green thread. And it occurred to me that uh, it might uh, be interesting or helpful uh, for you to see what happens uh, with my feet. Uh, so I'm going to start... Um, this uh, uh, quilting or embroidering the leaves uh, just for a minute with uh, uh, to, just so you can see what my foot does while I'm uh, doing the, uh, the 
quilting of this um, is something that a lot of people will actually do with two feet uh, and I find it's just easier with one maybe it's because I have big feet compared to the pedal size but um, anyway that's what happens with your feet. at the end of each branch. I'm trying to make it, you know, if you looked up into a natural tree, you would not see all of the branches behind every leaf. So some of these uh, gatherings here of these, these clusters of, of leaves are not going to necessarily be attached to one particular branch. They're uh, There's going to be some in there that are, are not, you know, just a little blob on the end of a branch. They go in, in between, you know, sort of on those branches that are implied to be in there. several more uh, leaves um, and I took it out of the hoop and gave it a uh, quick pressing and it's not uh, that terribly important because next I'm going to layer it and uh, quilt it. Uh, it's going to become a book cover. Um, but uh, there's the um, machine that I did it on and again there's the tree and um, well, just because let me also show you the back uh, looks about the same as the front because I used the same thread in the bobbin as I did in the top I wouldn't have to do that I could have used a plain uh, cheaper thread in the back and it would have been fine uh, but uh, there it is, and uh, I'll uh, add some pictures of the finished product after I make the book cover. <laughs> 